For any person who hasn't worked in the dry cleaning business, it's in fact a bit of a mystery. It's even a little bit suspicious. What happens to your favorite clothes when they get here? And why can they do a better job than me? This is a washing machine, but how is it different from the one I have at home? Here, an iron and board, pretty similar to any you will find in someone's apartment. So, I just don't get it. I can't understand what really happens here. But modern dry cleaning services can do what domestic detergents and machines can't. But what exactly is it that they do? What mechanisms do they use? And is there anything they can't do? Make yourself comfortable. Now, I will reveal all their secrets. Let's pretend you've never used a dry cleaning service, but one day you decide to take a chance. What would you see? You come in, hand in your clothes, get a receipt. After some time, you come back again, show the receipt, get your stuff back, clean, leave. Well, what had been happening to your clothes all that time? While the great scientist is dealing with the props, Let's look around a modern laundromat. What are its essential elements? Here it is, a dry cleaning machine. The one that uses organic solvents instead of water. However, they are not really dry and the machine itself resembles an ordinary domestic washing machine. Although it's bigger. And inside, the items that cannot be cleaned with water are spun and cleaned. Woolen things, coats, suit jackets, pants, leather and suede clothes, sheepskin coats, jackets, fur coats, delicate fabrics, silk linen. It seems that this is a regular wash. But let's wait for the end of the process to make sure that they are clean and dry. Organic solvents rock. Here's a machine that does the opposite to dry cleaning, wet cleaning. It even has more similarities with a domestic washing machine, but still, there are some differences. Yes, water is used here, but it is pre-cleaned and softened. It is difficult to wash with hard water. It uses professional detergents in liquid doses. You can also find fabric conditioners similar to supermarket ones. Some of them make clothes softer. Others, on the contrary, give them a starchy effect. Water temperature varies from 80 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. It doesn't rise above 110. And here is a special advanced mode for spinning the drum. It can be compared to the washing technique, which was employed half a century ago and even earlier. Look carefully, blow, and friction. Once again, it crumples the linen. Blow and friction. A mechanical blow it weakens molecular bonds. Friction then removes stains completely from the fabric. Two techniques from the manual washing method of the pre-industrial era are transferred to this modern mechanism. The linen is pressed against the wall of the drum by a centrifugal force and falls from above. Then it spins slowly. This is an analog method of blow and friction. Domestic washing machines do something similar, but in these machines, the process is as perfect as hand washing was half a century ago.
This is called a form finisher. Their main function is, no, no. Let's allow this very attractive lady to talk about this laundromat. The main function of the form finisher is... Wait a second, less provocatively and more seriously. The main function of form finishers is to prepare clothes for ironing. Slightly wet clothes are steamed out and given their form, and then they are manually ironed. All the necessary boards and equipment are nearby. Thank you, that was extremely interesting. Let's move on. This is probably the most unexpected option of modern dry cleaners. On the other hand, it is very convenient. We use shoes and bags every day, and they also tend to become dirty. By the way, these things have one unpleasant feature for dry cleaners. It is the lack of information, labels inside, which indicate the material of the item and how it should be cleaned. So here, the workers have to rely on their experience. But don't forget about the labels. The first labels appeared in Europe in the 1950s. In the 1960s, they appeared across the rest of the world. At first, there were no symbols. All the information was written in plain text like this. Labels began to appear after stores started to make huge losses when customers returned damaged clothes. I just washed it. How did you wash it? In boiling water. But how could you do that? I always wash clothes in boiling water. Does it say that I can't do it? I only added a little bleach. But it is dark. So what? Does it say that I can't bleach black and dark fabrics? My wife just ironed it. But it is synthetic fabric. Listen, my wife might not be the best at this, but does it say that it can't be ironed? Anyone would know. Technically, the customers were right, at least according to the law. There is no label with instructions for using a particular item, so it means that if it deteriorated from washing or ironing, the manufacturer is to blame. Give me my money back and I'll leave. Buy a new jacket. Buy a new brain. Today, labels have all the information in great detail. There are so many symbols that sometimes they contradict each other. You look at the tag and understand that the thing can neither be washed nor ironed. Wear it and throw it away? But does it make any difference if people most of the time don't look at the symbols and don't even understand them? So here's a short educational program. There are five basic symbols. Washing, drying, ironing, bleaching, dry cleaning. Now, here are the nuances. Washing. It means that this thing can be washed in the machine or water cleaned. But if the symbol looks like this, you can only wash the item by hand. The number indicates the highest temperature of the wash. One line below means delicate mode or especially delicate. Now try to understand what this drawing means, especially delicate hand washing. What does that even mean? You can't even touch the item. Let's move on. Drying. A circle in the middle means it can be machine dried. In a dryer. Vertical and horizontal lines mean no dryers. Only aired and respectively in the vertical or horizontal position. There's another symbol. It means it should be dried in the shade. Imagine, this means drying in open air horizontally and in the shade. Well, does anyone even care? Moving on. Ironing. Well, this is the most understandable and obvious symbol. The dot inside means temperature. The more dots, the hotter the iron. This means that you cannot use steam when ironing. 
Next, bleaching. There's a funny clarification. If there's a triangle, then bleaching is not allowed with substances containing chlorine. Again, I don't understand who really cares. And finally, this symbol is the symbol for dry cleaning. That is, the item should not be washed with water, only with organic solvents. P means tetrachloroethylene. F, hydrocarbon solvents, the ones used by the very first dry cleaning services. And finally, the crosses mean prohibited. And trust me, some labels indicate that you can't do anything with a piece of clothing. I'm really curious to find out what dry cleaners do in that case. When you go to clean items, do you look at their labels before cleaning them? We always look at the labels and follow all the instructions indicated. But there are exceptions. Some stains are especially hard to remove with the preferred cleaning method. Then we talk to the client and inform them that the instructions will have to be violated. What do you do if the label states that all types of cleaning are prohibited? Dry cleaning and water cleaning. When the technologist inspects the item of clothing, a decision is made whether they might be cleaned and then we contact the customer and inform them about our chosen method, which may cause some defects. If the client agrees, the item is cleaned. If they don't agree, the item is returned to the client. Mr. Faraday, how can we forget about you? Did you find the necessary props? Fine. So, here's the story about the organic solvent which made dry cleaning possible. Michael Faraday was a very versatile scientist. He was interested in physics and chemistry. In both fields, he made brilliant discoveries. Electromagnetic induction, the first electric motor, the transformer, the laws of electrolysis, electromagnetic waves were predicted. The following terms were even introduced into scientific use. Ion, anode, cathode, dielectric, paramagnetism. You can go on and on, but he probably had no idea what was to happen later with his findings. In 1823, being a very young scientist, Faraday took up the study of one unusual substance. In those days, it was mistaken for chlorine, but nobody was sure of it. The researcher placed this chlorine in a sealed glass tube, and he began to heat it up. The substance melted and divided into two liquids. One was oily, and the other one was transparent. At this point, someone called Dr. Paris, entered the laboratory. Seeing the result of the experiment, he began to speak sarcastically. Aren't you ashamed of yourself, young man? You are working with dirty test tubes. You have not cleaned the flask. But Faraday paid no attention to being mocked. He carefully cut the glass tube and almost injured himself. However, it delighted Faraday. He realized that the oily liquid was chlorine and the transparent one was water. That is, the original solid substance is chlorine hydrate. After conducting the experiment again and making sure that the conclusions were correct, Faraday wrote a letter to Mr. Paris. Dear sir, the oil you noticed yesterday was nothing but liquid chlorine. You can congratulate me on a new discovery visit me more often. Yours faithfully, Faraday. Based on chlorine, Faraday's created several new chemical compounds, including tetrachloroethylene, commonly used organic solvent, non-flammable, hypoallergenic, and as it turned out later, perfect for cleaning clothes. And today, most of dry cleaners worldwide use tetrachloroethylene. Studies have shown its effectiveness and safety for humans. Thanks to the English scientist who certainly did not know that this substance would be in demand almost 200 years after its discovery.
And now, the main secret of dry cleaning. What happens to your favorite clothes when they get here? It all starts with the items being evaluated. Things are not just taken for cleaning, they are described in detail. What stains they have, damage, and so on, so that no issues arise later on. In the end, the client signs the contract and the clothes go on to the next stage. Sorting. They are once again inspected by specialists and distributed into different departments. Some will be water cleaned, others dry cleaned, and so on. At this stage, technologists decide how the item will be treated. And if they do not agree with the recommendations that are written on the label, they will simply ignore them. This is a very important stage. All accessories, buttons, fasteners, jewelry, are unsewn. All the things that can't be unsewn are covered with a soft cloth. I could see it somewhere, yeah, here. Hardly anyone will do this at home. It is done to prevent the accessories from damaging the fabric. And the next stage pre-soaking or manual cleaning. It is also professionally called pre-treatment. Particularly dirty areas are cleaned separately, several times if needed. And then the clothes are sent into either a wet cleaning machine or a dry cleaning one. By the way, one item is never washed separately. One shirt, one jacket, no. Only a few things together at once. And it's not done like that to save money. One item of clothing alone can't be washed properly. Therefore, if there are no other clothes of a suitable fabric, then special towels go in along with them. After the treatment, everything is examined again, and if the stains aren't gone completely, tags like these are stuck next to them. Then the item is again manually washed with the help of this steam gun. Next come the form finishers that we've already talked about. And this is not the only method used for ironing. There are machines that straighten cuffs and collars. For the final ironing and creating creases, the piece of clothing is ironed by hand. At the final stage, all the accessories are sewn back in place. Buttons are sewn, fasteners, zippers, and jewelry. And all the clothes are put on hangers or shelves until the client comes to collect them. Of course, Sometimes it happens that clothes can't be completely cleaned. Anything can happen. All this is explained in the contract between the client and the dry cleaner. Well, the truth is that it rarely happens. Nowadays, we know how to remove paint and iodine stains effectively. Dry cleaning is the final frontier. It separates 
Homo sapiens from Homo modern contemporary man. After all, if we go to professionals for clothes and food production, hairstyling and health care, then why do we wash our own clothes? Right, of course, dry cleaning is the final frontier. But one day, we will overcome it.